So uh, as an example, behind the website of BBC, uh, there is uh, one, this database that is updated like 10 times a second with all the influence and, and, and stuff going on. While there, there, there are hundreds of queries, uh, read queries that, that they use to generate the web pages. So if you occasionally use, uh, go to, to the sports section of the website of BBC, you, you're seeing this in action all the time. Uh, we do use text analytics. We have all the weaponry that people usually have uh, for, this, for this purpose. Uh, and at the end of the day, uh, the result often looks like this. So you have text and you recognize some stuff in the text. And what's more important, it points out to something that's in the knowledge graph. Of course, you have uh, relevance, confidence about everything that you recognize. Uh, that's pretty much what everyone has. So uh, I'll switch over to Peo. Uh, while, while he's getting on the computer, uh, we have a project called o Open Policy. It's with an organization called the Logistics Management Institute, about 1,000 people in Washington, D.C. Together with them, we deliver this uh, vocabulary management solution to various ag agencies, uh, be it in Department of Defense, uh, Human uh, Health Services, and so on. You pay the full is yours. Thank you. Uh, I, we thought that we should share this story because this is a cool story about two things. First is the collaboration in the fiber world, and the second is the immediate, use, immediate uh, usage of uh, the work that you have created. So first, how it actually the fiber world worked together. We got involved most deeply with fiber because thanks to Jake, was who was really passionate to convince us that there is this is the thing that we should be doing and then on the last uh, meeting with david actually we're discussing how we're approaching it how we're doing stuff and he gave us a cool idea that yeah this is like might be used in various other ways so why don't you do this then thankfully to the dean uh, works to transform this to as cost, we were able to make an immediate use of it because fiber might be a top level ontology but there is a lot of value and actually enormous value in the uh, terms in which are, or if represented to a vocabulary, can be like of immediate use. Uh, and this is actually an example how we were able to use this uh, uh, this knowledge in order to uh, be able to uh, get this value out of it from the actually the version uh, which was uh, like this product that we have open policy. So what open policy is? It has actually a tree. Uh, uh, columns application. In the left column, this is the actual regulation that somebody is interested in. Uh, the uh, uh, right column are the, all the facets. Here we have a small SCOS editor when you can see all the uh, concepts. And of course, somebody might uh, be able to do a facet uh, on top of them. And it's going to be slow. And actually, it enables to uh, put uh, uh, relevant fiber terms to all the paragraphs and all the segments of a regulatory compliance. So it's basically uh, the use cases for discovery and being able to combine the knowledge a model of fiber to store it in a database and to run a uh, not so sophisticated text analysis on top of it. We're able to uh, like segment and annotate each paragraph with uh, Mm. with all the uh, fiber concepts which are relevant to it. And this way we can uh, move uh, and present, uh, let's say, uh, a relevant content to somebody who is looking for a fiber concept. And depending on what's loaded on the right side, you can get a really quick access to uh, the relevant knowledge. And this is a rather simple but powerful example how different derivatives of fiber can be put into some use because now we are working on it uh, to provide uh, specialized feed for uh, regulations and so i don't know if you uh, yeah and now we're working with it to provide uh, feeds uh, to people who are interested in changes to regulation and we might use one or more than one of the fiber concept to uh, let them know what's pending on what has been currently amended. And uh, by uh, <clears throat> using uh, uh, text analytics, we can assess even the priority of this one. So uh, we put fiber into an immediate use and help people make sense of the complexity of the regulatory documents. 
And this is something which has been done like uh, with a not so many efforts and something which proves the immediate value to FIWO to the community. Thank you. This was, this was actually the result of uh, probably a couple of hours of work. So it, and, and, and that's, that's the case with many of these demonstrations. That's not what, what you can achieve uh, in, a, in a year of effort. On the FIBO, it was literally a couple of hours. And most of the stuff that I'll present now, it was a uh, couple of weeks of work to, to, to put all this together. So the message that I'm trying to convey is that uh, <clears throat> with this technology and with FIBO, it's fairly easy to, to do these kind of things. So uh, we, we, we are basically basically aiming at a case where you can, you can detect uh, uh, these kind of patterns, like uh, if you have uh, organizations that control each other through some chain of relationships, they're located somewhere, there are some relationships between the locations, like uh, Seattle being, being, being uh, part of Washington, that's part of uh, USA, and so on and so forth. And this way you can detect, uh, detect patterns like a uh, uh, US company controlling another US company through a company uh, in, on the Cayman Islands. Uh, this kind of stuff, uh, and 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 to combine this with the uh, news analysis. So that's the, that's that's where we are going. So uh, that's not so interesting. So uh, for those of you who don't know uh, what what linked data is, <laughs> that's a web of data that started around 2007, relatively small, all sorts of things. Like you have uh, DBpedia that we will be using. That's a uh, artificial version of Wikipedia. GeoNames is a very, very well maintained and uh, good quality uh, database with uh, geographic features, all sorts of geographic features on Earth, millions of them. Uh, then there are dictionaries and many other things. So this thing was growing quite well through the years, so it really grows exponentially. I, I hate when people who don't know mathematics speak about exponential stuff, but it, this is this is exponential one. So it really grows, and th there is a bigger volume of data that, that's coming, coming available. So <clears throat> the point of this presentation was how we can get few data sets uh, from uh, linked data and, and to, to, to uh, 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 do some sort of uh, yeah, uh, polishing and, and uh, small adjustments to them, uh, map them to FIBO and get something, something use, useful out of it. So the concrete setup is <clears throat> we have the English uh, version of DBpedia. That's about uh, half a billion triples. Geonames, 150 billion triples. Uh, we, they, they are well mapped between one another, which is uh, useful. Uh, and then we have uh, some 130 million statements that are just links between news articles and, uh, and this knowledge graph. Uh, we have also loaded uh, some some data from uh, the legal entity identifier uh, initiative. Uh, I'll talk about it later. Uh, that's a, as much as we've been able to get. So Kevin recommended us to have a look at uh, this GLAY modeling tool. Uh, we took the biggest dump and it was like 3 million statements. Still interesting stuff. I'll show you some statistics la later. So all together this way we ended up with uh, a repository of about a billion of triples, uh, two thirds of which are explicit and the rest of it was inferred. On top of this repository, we have plenty of uh, yeah, useful things on top of the bare bone triple store, like uh, geospatial indexing, full text indexing, uh, uh, RDF rank that allows you to, to score results and so on and so forth. So about the news metadata, <coughs> uh, we, let me find where it is. No, that's not this one. Uh, so we we are in news for quite quite a long time, uh, uh, analyzing news uh, using these big knowledge graphs. Uh, so uh, we have a public service called uh, now.ontotext.com. You don't don't see it so well here, but it's constantly fed with news. So that's news coming from I think Google. Uh, so we process them, uh, the, this one came an hour ago, and for each of them, I'll probably try to make it a bit bigger, uh, you, you, you see this metadata so you can 
uh, click on a specific uh, concept, you can explore what we what we have about this concept in the graph. Uh, see popularity trends. Oh, it's not loading too fast. Oh, I picked up on, on Brussels. And you see that out of a sudden it became very popular on the 23rd of March. It was a sad reason, but still. There's uh, the, the bombings on, 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 on the Brussels airport. Uh, you can see which other entities it co-occurs with, like uh, organizations and uh, people. Uh, it's not a surprise, sorry, to, to see that Angelo Merkel and uh, Alexis Tsipras and uh, uh, other European politicians are those that most often appear together with this one. Uh, yeah, and of course you can jump again into news and, and, and this kind of thing. So, uh, that's, that's the same platform that is actually being used by, by people like Financial Times and BBC for their news. Uh, so what, what, what I'm trying to demonstrate here uh, is how we can get all the metadata that we generate for this news and do some statistics and, and, and get Fibre involved in the game. Uh, so these are about 10 million statements, uh, sorry, 10,000 hmm, 10, news a month. So not too much, not too less. 300 news per, per day, sort of. Uh, 70, 70 tags, 70 annotations, 70 links between a news article and something in the graph for on average. Um, it's like uh, yeah, all sorts of news, mostly international, uh, business, sports, everything. Uh, you can see the distribution of, of the kind of things that we recognized in the text. So uh, uh, quite a big number of those are key phrases that we automatically extracted from the text. But you see that uh, organizations, locations, and people are on part to, on each other, like number of references in the text that we've been able to find. Good. So uh, let's uh, try to, to get to get feeling about uh, what this graph looks like. Uh, so we call this diagram the bows of Tetsu. That's one colleague who, who designed it. Uh, so it represents the classes, uh, the classes of things that are that 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 are available in the that, that are loaded in the repository. Uh, you see agent places and other things. Uh, if you zoom into agent, you see that we, we, we have about three million agents, which are yeah, that's the super class for person and organization. Uh, you can further drill drill down to, to, to see what, what sort of subclasses of people person we have. You can uh, click on any of them to, to get additional information uh, and and so on and so forth. So we essentially need these kind of tools and diagrams to, to allow us exp uh, easily explore data sets that, 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 that are com com combined from multiple sources. Uh, and each engineer or even data architect needs some, some sort of a tool to figure out what, what, what's in there in this kind of thing that, that, that we loaded. Uh, <clears throat> so FIBO, uh, we, we loaded uh, the, the, the foundations and the B components. Uh, <clears throat> so all together these are about uh, 5,000 statements. Uh, and uh, when we load them with the outro rail profile, we infer another 15,000. Uh, and those get materialized and stored in the, in, in, in the triple store. Uh, in these two modules of uh, FIBO, we, we see about uh, 337 classes. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, they, they are visible here, uh, but I mean, I, I, to, to be able to take this picture, I, I, I loaded them in a separate repository first so that you can see just FIBO. Uh, and here you see FIBO in the context of the, of the bigger thing. Uh, like we have uh, <coughs> autonomous agent with organization and person. You can further drill down into organizations and so on. Uh, but what you see here is that we, we have uh, like uh, 2.5 million instances of FIBO autonomous agent. That's because of the mapping that we did between FIBO and uh, the DBPD ontology. So that essentially you can see the FIBO, uh, the, all these data through the FIBO classes and, and, and properties. 
uh, yeah, that's not rocket science. You can see uh, properties, do, sort of domain range graph for crosses. Uh, these, in this case, we did a sort of minimalistic mapping. So uh, we, we, we basically mapped uh, per person, a company, and organization to the relevant uh, uh, concepts in FIBO. And uh, we map DB, DBpedia subsidiary, uh, the pre, DBpedia ontology predicate subsidiary to uh, uh, controls in, in, in FIBO. Uh, <clears throat> it, was in, it is important that, that we map them in such a way that uh, essentially the classes uh, within, the classes within uh, uh, the bigger data set, the DBpedia classes are subclasses of those in FIBO. So that uh, yeah, one can one can really see the, the instances of those classes through the fiber primitives. If we have done it the other way around, this wouldn't work. Uh, we don't want to put them equivalent because they're not precisely equivalent. So uh, that's pretty much uh, it. Uh, so let's go to to some examples. Uh, one thing to mention is that. Uh, in this case, we can enjoy what we call semantic press clipping. This fact that we have uh, annotated uh, found references of concrete objects in the text. We did the disambiguation so that if you have uh, Paris in the text, we know whether this is Paris in France, Par Paris in Texas, Paris Hilton, or Paris the Greek hero, or whoever. Uh, that's, that's important. We caught all sorts of variations of the names and these kind of things. Uh, that's half our business anyway. Uh, the more interesting thing in this case is that we, we can also uh, trace, and, and I'll just demonstrate this, uh, uh, references and appearances in the text of like related objects, like uh, daughter companies or related people, this kind of stuff. And we can, of course, use also all sorts of information that we have in the graph, like making statistics about banks, making statistics about automotive companies. Uh, and I'll make a few, few live queries now. So to start with, uh, I'll get uh, objects, just a second. Uh, so I have a Sparkle query which um, you, you, can, you can use this as a parameter, you say, in this case, Volkswagen Group. Uh, is, it, is it visible? I should make it a little bit bigger, probably. Uh, so you say, well, I, I bind the uh, Volkswagen Group to entity. Then I'm getting two FIBO controls. I'm getting entities that are related to FIBO via this predicate. I also bind uh, Volkswagen Group, the entity itself, to be part of this set. And then that's, that's a bit technical. I'm essentially saying I, use new, I need news that refer to any of these objects. And then I filter by date. In this case, it's uh, uh, April, April 2015. Uh, uh, good, so that's, that's easy. Uh, and, and I'm getting back. As you see, news articles that refer not necessarily to Volkswagen, but to Audi, to uh, what else, to Porsche, to Lamborghini, uh, because we have information about all these companies that they are part of the Volkswagen Group, and that this comes directly out of out of DBpedia. Uh, I, I personally made the exercise to polish a little bit uh, this uh, the par, uh, par, uh, company control information in DBpedia because it's very messy. As you can imagine, they use probably 10 different predicates to, to designate these relationships. But 10 is not that much because you, you make a query of give me uh, the most popular relationships between organizations. You, within 10 minutes, you know which are the 20 that, that matter. You map them. And one hour later, you're, you're in the game. And, and there, there is plenty of uh, this information, like uh, parent-child relationship between companies available. And actually, it, uh, it is because we have access to some, some, some good quality databases from commercial vendors. Uh, it is just a different view. 
very often you have information in, 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 in DBpedia that, that is true and that is for whatever reason still missing with the commercial databases. Uh, okay, let's let's move on. So uh, we can uh, uh, we can we can make various statistics like uh, uh, to give you a feeling about what's in this data set. Uh, I'll make statistics about uh, given this data set uh, in, 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 in DBpedia how many um, how many organizations we have within each industry. And you see finance is uh, at the top with 5,000. Uh, then transportation, software, telecommunications, and so on. Uh, this needed a bit of uh, clean, clean up also, uh, because again, uh, there, there are plenty of different predicates used to designate what, what, is, what industry this uh, uh, organization is part of. And also, uh, there is no agreement about uh, the, the identifier of what is finance. I mean, finance, you can find it in five different ways. Uh, but again, this is something that, that one can sort uh, within a day of work and get a decent industry classification, hierarchical, so that bank is uh, what, what is the uh, relative, relative popularity of uh, uh, different companies, uh, so which, which are the top performers across each and every industry, like for automotive, uh, it is like General Motors, Tesla, Volkswagen, uh, but then we say, hey, that's actually uh, that direct references of the companies uh, without uh, related, related companies and, and related entities. So we have an augmented version of this query that also includes uh, related companies. And then, uh, well, in this case, uh, we set as industry software. Uh, you can put anything, they have probably about a, a few hundred industry class, uh, identifiers at different levels. Uh, and you see Alphabet and Microsoft and Yahoo coming at the top of this. So, uh, Jacobus, what industry would you would be interested to? I just want to make a case that it's bully life. Just a second, I need my autocomplete uh, game. Okay. Uh, it's probably gaming. Video game industry. Here you are. Nexon, Nintendo, Nvidia, Blizzard. Does it make sense? Good. So we gotta finish soon, right? Okay, I, I'll scroll through the through the next. So I I won't uh, get in that much detail. So you can in the presentation that's available, you can see how the rankings can vary substantially, depending on whether you you got the the, the reference to the companies themselves or the companies and their uh, children companies. Uh, like Tesla appears to be the second most popular if you count just direct references. Uh, and it's, it, it goes down to fourth place if, if, it's, uh, the, if you consider all the, all the sub-companies. Uh, finance is uh, really messy because finance is too many things, but if you go into banking, you see Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan Chase being at the top uh, if you consider it uh, alone. Uh, then this is some sort of noise with the China Merchant, uh, Merchants Bank. Uh, but then JP Morgan Chase and Goldman Sachs switch places if you consider all the uh, related companies that are referred to in the news. Uh, so you can do things like uh, regional exposition of a company. So you, you can... 
And that's the last query I'm going to show, I promise. So for instance, for Toyota, uh, we, 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 we can see uh, locations from which countries are mentioned together with Toyota in the news. In order to figure out which, which regions, which countries are most related in the news with Toyota. Uh, so, yeah, in this case you see United States, Japan, Japan China and so on. Uh, but that's partly because uh, yeah, China is, uh, United States is too often in the news. If you normalize this query by, by the number of references that you usually have for this, the number of news about this country, you're getting a slightly more interesting picture. Uh, like from B British Petroleum, you see Angola, Mexico, Norway, and other countries that have something to do with the business of British Petroleum. Good. So uh, you see my experiments with the Glay data uh, from uh, from the presentation. It's still very strange. U.S. is very high there at the top. Goldman Sachs accounts for probably one tenth of the entire data set, uh, and these kind of things. So. Uh, the overall message was that we can we can basically map a link data to FIBO. Uh, we can integrate external data sources, like I did have time to, to say what happened with this lay data. Uh, but uh, within, within really hours of work, you can get a reasonable mapping between this kind of data set and, and, and public data. You can integrate this with text analytics. Uh, and we know how to get this done with yeah, existing okay. products. Any questions? <laughs>